Well, the fans of Murray, Kentucky is celebrating the holidays with a terrific non-conference college basketball matchup tonight. Southern Illinois and Murray State. Very pleasant. Good evening, everybody. Dave Weekly, happy to be alongside Nate Ross. Happy holidays, everybody. And Nate, we think we got a terrific basketball game tonight. A good non-conference matchup. Southern Illinois out of the Missouri Valley. Murray State expected to be one of the top teams in the Ohio Valley Conference. The Racers have a terrific defense. Yeah, they do it on the defensive end. They take a lot of pride in that. You can see they don't give up a great field goal percentage or three-point percentage. And they do their job on the boards. A great team at home. Well, Southern Illinois has given up only 55 points or less in their last four games. Our tip-off is coming up after these messages. Fans in Murray, Kentucky, all fired up about tonight's matchup. A key non-conference tilt, Southern Illinois, in town to take on the Racers of Murray State. Welcome inside the Regional Special Events Center in Murray, Kentucky for college basketball. The Salukis of Southern Illinois set to take on the Racers of Murray State. Very pleasant. Good evening, everybody. Dave Weekly, happy to be alongside Nate Ross. We wish you happy holidays, and we think we've got a, a great matchup for you tonight in college basketball. Southern Illinois, they've won four straight. Murray State, they're undefeated at home this season. And, Nate, the way the RPI of the Missouri Valley Conference is going these days, this is going to be an important game to have for one of these two teams at the end of the year. Missouri Valley Conference is fourth in the RPI, ACC, Big Ten, and Big East ahead of them. A big win if Murray State can pull it off at home here. Let's check our star watch, and we have got some terrific players in this game. How about the Saluki guard? Jamal Tatum can do it all and can do it from everywhere. If he's so quick, if you play off a mill, Julia from three, Pearson Griffith is a game changer. He can block shots and he can alter shots. Fourth in the country, big man can really do it for uh, Murray State. Griffith, one of the best shot blockers in the nation. Let's dive closer into this game with our Nate's notes. For Southern Illinois, balance is best. Four of their top five shooters are guards. They got to get something from inside, and they got to win the battle of the boards. Murray State will kill them on the boards if they're not ready. For Murray State, they got to get back to basics. They hold team under 40%. They have not done that the last two games. And then for a team that's so big and so athletic, they've only taken 89 free throws all year. They got to get to the line and get some free points from the free throw line. We're looking for a, a turnaround night by the guards of the Murray State Racers. We'll step aside momentarily from Murray, Kentucky. But when we come back, We've got holiday hoops for you, non-conference variety. The Salukis of Southern Illinois set to take on the racers of Murray State. Great night for college basketball in Murray, Kentucky. Southern Illinois out of the Missouri Valley Conference, Murray State. The preseason pick to win the OVC. Let's check our starting lineups. We've got some talent on this floor tonight. Starting lineups for this game. Southern Illinois, they've been to the NCAA tournament four years in a row. Faulkner and Shaw in, are up front. They'll go with a three-guard lineup. Tatum, the freshman Mullins, and Young for the racers of Murray State. Witherspoon and Orr and Redding will be at the forward slots. Griffith and Jennifer will be in the backcourt. Jennifer runs the point. He's making his 35th consecutive start. Chris Lowry is in his second season as the head coach at Southern Illinois. He was a terrific point guard. He was an assistant for Bruce Weber. And when Weber moved on to Illinois, he got the job in Carbondale. And Mick Cronin worked for Bob Huggins and for Rick Pitino. He's in his third season as the head coach at Murray State. We got two young guns in terms of coaches going at each other tonight, Nate. Yeah, we got a heck of a crowd for Christmas break. And no students here. Everybody enjoyed the Christmas Holiday, and now they're ready to play a little hoop. Murray State controls the tap. They're in their gold uniforms, trimmed in blue. The Salukis in their maroon, trimmed in white and black. From Southern Illinois, we're going to see mostly man-to-man -man defense all night long. That shot was blocked by Matt Shaw. And here's Tatum. He is one of the best conditioned athletes in all of college basketball. He will run all day. He is a challenge to any defense. You thought you heard a horn there. You did, but players were smart. Just played to hear a whistle. They didn't hear any whistle yet. Mullins has really given this team a lift since entering the starting lineup. They're five and one since he got into the starting five. Shot clock running down. 
three up and good for Tony Young Tony from the wing, and the Salukis draw first blood. That's fine, though. That's great defense by Murray State. They can force SIU into threes all night long. They're going to be in good shape. Look how far out the offense starts for both teams, because defensively, both teams will get after you. Here's four. Witherspoon can make those threes. He'll take one from the top. Offline, too strong. Offensive rebound. Controlled by the Racers. Griffith fights through the double team and scores the first basket for Murray State. There's something Pearson Griffith could not do last year. He rebounded a little bit. He can block shots, but man, is he getting better offensively. That's a big time move. Salukis with the ball and a 3 2 lead and off the ball. There's an offensive foul on Matt Shaw. Murray State knows they're going to get double team, but watch the coolness and watch the patience. Split the double team, left handed. That's a lot of good things happening on one little two point play there. Mick Cronin directing traffic. Here's Orr at the top. Lost the handle. And the ball goes to the Salukis. They're relentless on defense. If they shoot around today, Nate, they concentrated so much on what happens at the defensive end. Yeah, and every time a ball screen is set, Southern Illinois is going to trap it. Murray State knows it. That time they didn't execute very well, but that man right there told them they know what's going to happen. Coach Cronin told me you just got to play now, guys. Salukis will play great defense. They're forcing 21 turnovers a game. And that ball, <laughs> well, we told you about the shot blocker in the middle. Griffith, he's really the X factor tonight, Nate. The Salukis really have no answer. In fact, they have no one on their roster taller than 6'7". No, you don't find a kid at 6'10 with that kind of skill at this level. He's a special kind of player. And if he gets better offensively hey. like he did at the other end, Murray State's going to be in great shape this year in the OBC. Falker off to Tatum. There's Falker in traffic. And that's an offensive foul. So two early fouls here on the Salukis, both of the offensive variety. Redding with the great help side. Murray State talked all day in practice yesterday about you got to be aware off the ball. Yeah, we can guard on the ball, but you got to do something well off the ball. Redding with a great play there to draw the charge. This might be a coach's dream. Great defenses on both ends. I love this kind of game. Well, something has definitely got to give. Murray State is averaging over 82 points a game at home, but the Salukis play that terrific defense. And that ball is going the other way. And this officiating crew tonight is from the Missouri Valley Conference. Brian Mullins, the freshman point guard for the Salukis. Freshmen aren't supposed to do what this kid does. He's big, he's strong, and he never loses his cool. He took the ball away from uh, Murray State right there and created a turnover. Trey Pearson. Number zero now on the floor for Murray State. He's been coming off the bench the last couple of games. He's been in a, mired in a real shooting slump. Here's Mullen breaking the press alone all the way. Mullen put it up and in with the left hand. That wasn't a freshman wow. move. No, not at all. He looked off the defense, and everybody faked. He thought he was going right. Everybody in the building did. He is left-handed, but he put it up with the left hand. The Witherspoon nailed somebody on the screen at the top there. There's some big, strong kids on both teams. Murray State a little bigger, a little more athletic, and it should play out that way through the game. We'll see. Ball will belong to the Racers. Jamal Foster into the game for the first time, checking in. Dave, Murray State, unlike a lot of teams here, wants to try to score out its out-of-bounds play. They just don't want to get it inbounds. And the freshman, Tony Boyle, also on the floor right now for the Salukis. This is a very young Southern Illinois team. No scholarship seniors. And there's a foul down low before the shot. And that will go against Boyle. Great move, Griffith being big inside. He is 6'10", but a lot of times if you don't play big, you don't get the ball inside. He sealed his man, draw fouls. They got to get to that seven and get on that line. Jump shot off the baseline, up and good for Justin Orr. And here's something to watch in the upcoming minutes. And there's a foul in the backcourt on Orr. We're less than three minutes into this game, and the Salukis already have four team fouls. Well, Southern Illinois, Murray State wants to find out if Southern Illinois, especially Mullins and Point Guard, can handle full court pressure. Murray State wants to run. Murray State wants to go up tempo. They're going to try to trap, but when they trap, they want to trap from behind. They want to get Mullins turning and then trap him and see what he can do with a lot of heat in his face. We'll see how he does. Oral will, or will check out, and Darnell Hopkins, the senior from Baltimore, comes in and will be in the backcourt for Murray State. Here's Tatum, the pull-up. Online, but too strong. 
Pearson quickly into the front court. Good double team down low. Griffith has to kick it back out. Boy, how about that Saluki defense? It is smothering. Well, the one thing that Griffith has not done yet, and I'm sure he won't because Mick Cronin will yank him if he does, when the ball comes in the post, he knows he's getting double teamed. Be cool. He's got to look weak side or high post to find an open three-point shooter. Southern Illinois, six and three on the year. Murray State, five and three. Three and one in the OVC. Southern Illinois gets into Missouri Com Valley Conference play this weekend. And there's a foul up top. No, check it, five-second call. The coach Cronin got on Hopkins in practice yesterday, too. Don't dribble the ball and stand there. He dribbled three times and never moved. Consequently, that's two or three seconds going. If you're going to dribble, dribble to get away from pressure or dribble to advance the ball to the basket. He didn't either. Consequently, turn it. <laughs> Consequently, he goes right back to the bench. Jennifer back on the floor for the racer. That's the way to teach him. Guarded by Jennifer, at least for the moment. We expect yeah. to see many, many racers on him tonight. Shot out of the corner. That's a three-pointer for Mullins. That's not his modus operandi normally, but they gotta they gotta respect him because he just hit a nice curl. That is his sixth three-pointer of the season. That shot was partially deflected by Tatum. Boyle picked up the dribble. Another three. This one too long for Young. Battle inside for the rebound. And a foul is going to be called, and it will be on Young. Griffith did a great job of getting the man on his back. Southern Illinois is running a lot more than I thought they would. I don't think they can keep this up for 40 minutes. Just underway from Murray, Kentucky. Southern Illinois getting a three out of the corner by the freshman, Brian Mullins. And they lead Murray State 8-4. Chris Lowry in his second season. 33 and 11 on the bench, just 32 years old. And of course, Mick Cronin, the youngest coach in the Ohio Valley Conference. Two young guns and two guys on the way up, Nate. Three point field goals. Southern Illinois has knocked down a pair. Southern Illinois, however, five team fouls here in the early going. And Matt Shaw is already on the bench with two personal fouls. We'll see how, we'll see how that manifests itself for the remainder of the first half. Yeah, it hurts us, IU, because he's a big, strong kid inside. Boyle's going to have to do his now. Racers! 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 Yeah. Pearson and Jennifer have really struggled shooting the basketball. They'd love to see them get off tonight. And the foul is on Trey Pearson. ESPN U's coverage of college basketball continues in the new year as the Michigan Wolverines face Marco Killingsworth and the Indiana Hoosiers. College basketball on ESPN U Tuesday at 6 p.m. Eastern. Defense! Jennifer, the Defense! veteran, Defense! guarding Mullins, giving token full court pressure D. And the Salukis really have some guys on the floor now who can handle the ball. Young, the pull-up pop, and it's good. Right over Pearson. Tony Young, Tony exceptionally Young. quick off the dribble, create a shots whenever it creates a shot whenever he wants one, just by those quicks, just elevates over people. He can do that from three as well. And it's hard to believe when you watch him move the way he does that he broke an ankle in a pickup game during the summer, but he is back at full strength now. Jennifer with a penetration. Here's Pearson from the wing. Barely touched the rim. And the rebound controlled by the Saluki. She wasn't ready to shoot that. You got to be ready from the waist down. Wesley Clemens got that rebound. And here's a, here's a palming violation called against Mullins. And it's so funny because Chris Lowry was talking about palming violations in his comments to us today right after the shoot-around. So they called a ton of them up in Alaska against him. And then they stopped reading the memos, didn't call him anymore. Well, these guys must have read the memos. Because you could call that every time. In college. And the pros can call it every play. College basketball, you call it on. It is a point of emphasis. And they're going to call it. Hopefully, they won't destroy the momentum of this game because it's great flow so far. Now we've got some players on the floor now that aren't used to seeing very serious minutes. Tyler Holloway, the high school freshman from Decatur, Alabama, is on the floor. And Austin Brooks, the senior from Evansville, Indiana, checks in for the Salukis. I think both coaches realize it's going to be 40 minutes of running, so I better get my bodies in there and get some fresh legs. Holloway is a pure shooter, a terrific shooter. We've got an offensive foul away from the basket on Charles Johnson, the senior from Atlanta. Very physical game so far. They let him play till the first time out. The second time out, they haven't let him play. Big, strong kids banging each other. That team foul is going to be very important here. Salukis with five. Murray State now with three. 
We've still got to just under 15 minutes to go in the first half. And there's Jennifer whistled on a personal. The reason that Jennifer was in his face so much is they're supposed to trap, but nobody else came because Southern Illinois did such a great job, Dave, of spreading people out. He would have had to run 40 feet to trap. When you do that, it's an open passing lane. Not a good defensive work there because of great offensive execution by the Salukis. Uh, McCronin goes to the bench for Rob Kennedy, 33, now on the floor for the Racers. Here's Tate. So quick. Three attempt out of the corner. No good that time for Clemens. And here come the Racers racing down the floor. Or the crossover. And he threw it away. Tip, gotta shoot that oh, ball. That ball. I guess they say it was tipped. Well, Racers gonna keep possession. Gotta shoot that ball. He got it within 10 feet of the basket and tried to pass. Just score. Three point attempt. Shot blocked. Terrific block by Foster. 6'10 man beyond the three point line blocking shots. That's impressive. We got some athletes on the floor tonight. Holloway guarded by Tatum. And he threw it away. Boyle with the steal. Here comes Tatum in the open floor. And the Salukis will keep it. Boy, defensive pressure tonight. Yeah, big time athletes are playing very, very hard. It's fun to watch. Hopkins comes back, as does Griffith. Orr and Kennedy will take a seat for McCronin right now. Tatum takes it to Griffith, who made him alter his shot, but he dropped it in anyway. That's a big time shot. That, we said he was quick, and we said he can create one. That was big time. I mean, he went way up in the air, off the dribble. That's extremely hard to do. So he's now with an eight-point lead, their largest, at 12 to 4. Well, he can't handle the pressure. Jennifer shot sent out by Foster, his second block of the first half. He got popped three times going up to the basket there. Tatum, what a quick first step. Look at this shot. Watch him just elevate. That's big time athleticism over the fourth best shot blocker in the country. And now, get that thing out of here. You can't come in the lane in my. It's, I'm on the road, but I'm not going to let you do it. Offense will come and go, but that Saluki defense is consistent. They have really turned the heat up defensively since playing in the Great Alaska Shootout. And those days, guards haven't been able to handle it so far. They've done uncharacteristic things by turning it over. Tatum's got to make it happen. Shot clock running down. Tough shot in traffic. And a rebound by Brooks and a fresh 35. Well, ball hit the rim a second time. Nobody was ready for it. Just an unlucky bounce. Down the lane. Shot will not go. Rebound by Redding. Long pass ahead to Pearson. Hopkins is with red hot shooting the threes. They'll take it inside. Rebound attempt. No good. Another offensive rebound by the Racers. Finally, a foul's called. Man, good that, work in the paint by Griffith. That's big time hoops in the lane there, boy. Watch them bang each other. The initial drive inside, he got fouled twice, no call. Redding gets the putback, no call. Now three guys against him. You got to foul. I mean, there's three guys grabbing him. They got to call something, and they finally stop the action. If these guys aren't ready to play tonight, they are in trouble. Or back on the floor. Witherspoon returns for the racers as well. The whole thing started with Hopkins, maybe the strongest guard on the court, getting bumped and couldn't score. Well, he is a physical player. Ball deflected out of bounds by Boyle. 31 on the shot clock. Racers will keep it. Coach Cronin talked about Orr and everybody else. You can't throw easy passes. They're going to take it and go the other way with it. you got to be tough with the basketball. Know when your postman's open and give it to him hard. Griffith can catch the ball. He's got to give it to him. Young returns for the Salukis. Tatum will take a seat, but only for a moment. He leads the Salukis in minutes per game. Southern Illinois will deny you everywhere. Look at this. Across here. Look at it. Oh, big time. Look how far out they forced the racers, and they forced the turnover. Terrific defense by the Salukis. They're just out playing Murray State at home. That shouldn't happen in this building. They're playing harder, and they're getting in their face. The way you leave pressures go back door. Look at this. He just gets in his face, loses the ball, gets it to Redding. Redding loses it out of bounds. 
Now you got to turn it up at this end or you're going to get smoked. Right now, Murray State shooting just 18% from the field to start this game in the first eight minutes. Paul from the baseline, back iron, tough luck shot. Griffith the rebound. Okay, but look at the difference. Southern Illinois takes their time, takes a shot when they want it. First, they can't shoot because they're not allowed to. Great move. When the shots aren't going down, take the ball to the cup. And that's what Witherspoon did with a strong drive. It was a basket the racers needed. He cut the lead to six. He's a big time athlete. He's got to play like one tonight. Pressure is great if you let it get to you. If you attack it like Witherspoon just did, it doesn't bother you. Inside the boil, kick it back outside to Young. The Salukas go anywhere they want with the ball because they're not denying passes, Murray State is. At the other end, different story. Boy, Brooks has been steady off the bench, giving some key early minutes for the Salukis here. Three. Barely touched the rim for Young. Said he was fouled by Orr. No call. Back the other way comes Pearson. All the way. Oh. Brooks lost, that, lost the ball off his foot. That was not a good shot. That was like, I'm stuck in the lane, I'm throwing it off the basket. Frantic action in Murray, Kentucky. Witherspoon for two, but the racers trail at home by six to the Salukis of Southern Illinois. In the opener of a six-game homestand, Murray State trailing by six to Southern Illinois. ESPN News coverage of college basketball continues New Year's Eve as Daryl Mitchell and the LSU Tigers face Terrence Stiles and the Ohio State Buckeyes. College basketball, it's part of Holiday Hoops on ESPN News, Saturday, December 31st at 1 p.m. Eastern. Well, we talked to Chris Lowry today and we asked him specifically what caused the turnaround for Southern Illinois after they had admittedly a poor performance in the Great Alaska Shootout. And he was just quick to respond with the comment about the intensity on defense. They challenge every pass. They guard their man. We will see the Salukis in man-to-man -man defense virtually 95% of the time tonight. Yeah, and he told us that they did it on, the, obviously they lost up in Alaska two games. And he told them, you got to come to play on the road. And they didn't do that done tonight so far. First time the press paid off for Murray State. They're not going to stop pressing. And sometimes it's not bad to give up a basket. You speed the tempo up. Now they got to make them pay by turning this turnover into points. Now, Falker lost that ball out of bounds. Here's a chance for the racers to get a little closer. Have a timeout. You run a set play. We'll see if they can convert. Here's Witherspoon. Very closely by Foster. Witherspoon. That's a two-pointer. Off the rim and the rebound controlled by the Salukis. It was all maroon under the basket, and Clemens got the rebound. Yeah, Griffith got shoved underneath. Best thing to do with a big rebounder is put him in a position we can't rebound. Under the net, you can't rebound. That's why they pay the guys in the striped shirts. Mullins back on the floor, the freshman for the Salukis. Backing down, Griffith, and Griffith blocked the shot. Volker backed him down, and Griffith sent it out. You sound surprised he blocked the shot. He does it a lot. <laughs> How do you like the way he blocked that shot and didn't block it out of bounds? Took control of it. Shot from the wing. That's no good for Redding. Redding leads this team in scoring over 13 a game, and he's only playing 20 minutes a game. And he shoots 50% from downtown. He missed that one badly. He's a much better shooter than that. He was so wide open, I don't think he knew how to deal with it. Nine and a half to go in the first half. Young from the top. Air ball. Yeah, I think somebody got a piece of it. The refs didn't see it. They're going to give it back to Murray State. You know, you say, geez, why can't they make shots? Because it's great defense. That's why they can't make shots. Both teams are getting in their face. Every shot's contested. It's, they're going to have to go inside and make something happen. Remember, the big man got it inside Griffith a couple times early. He hadn't gotten it yet for about the last eight or nine minutes to make something happen with it. Well, fans have really turned out tonight here in Murray, Kentucky, but the Salukis have taken the Racer fans right out of this game. This is a quiet building yes. right now. There it is, wide open. Witherspoon, that's a three. Tough rebound by Redding. What a Inside pass. to Witherspoon, but he couldn't finish. Still fighting inside. Redding, put it up and in with a right hand. That's three shots, two offensive and rebounds. Five. That's what Murray State needs to do, and that turned his crowd on a little bit. Now they need to stop. 
offensive rebounds. That's really been an area that the Salukis have thrived in, but the tough opportunities off the glass on that trip by the Racers. Witherspoon steps in the passing lane, gets the steal. Drew a charge earlier in the game, now it helps out, he gets the ball. Big possession right here. Pearson. Witherspoon didn't want to take a three. Great pass. Inside the finish, up and good for Griffin. And he's fouled and will go to the line to try to complete a three-point play. The high-low is a very difficult pass to execute, but when you got a kid like Griffiths with great hands, just throw it up in the air. He's the biggest person on the floor. He's going to catch it. Then it's up to him to score and now chance for a three-point play. Watch this pass. Kicks it out. Nice lob pass into Griffith, keeps his composure, goes up and gets fouled and scores now. He's got to make a three-point play the weight room way. Falker whistled on the personal. Griffith, just a 59% free throw shooter, and uh, he showed you why. Yeah, he looked like a 59er right there, but add up the fouls, it's a good thing. Now Tatum with that quick step, and he is fouled by Jennifer as he tried to go to the baseline. Now, Dave, this is what drives you nuts as a player. They let you bang each other, bump each other, they don't call anything, and then you get the star with the ball, he takes one dribble, you bump and foul. But you got to adjust to that, it just isn't consistent. It's hard to adjust to that if you're a player. Hopkins and Orr come back on. Jennifer will take a seat. He's got two personal fouls now. Both of these teams don't go to zone out of bounds under. Most teams do, they don't. Southern Illinois, 17 fouls. Tatum on the pull-up. He'll do that just about as well as anybody in the nation. Yeah, that one inside the cylinder will not hang in there. How about Hopkins? Coast to coast. He was so wide open. He thought he was going to get fouled. He was so wide open, he just missed an easy layup. <laughs> Hopkins did it all. Sprinting from end to end and missed the layup. And I watched Coach Cronin doing that little play. There. He didn't care. Missed the layup, go press. That's the pace that Murray State wants in this basketball game. They'll get these fans turned on. They'll get his kids turned on. And it'll make the Salukis play a pace they're not accustomed to. All right. Chris Lauer is going to roll the dice here. He's got Shaw back on the floor now with two personal fouls. Ball stolen by Johnson. And another mislayup. And oh, an offensive foul called on Hopkins. I don't know about this one. But we will get a look. Got a clear path to the bit. Now, he went under there when he was in the air. You got to have a place to land. That's not a good call. They got to love the defensive stance by Brian Mullins. Oh, he's a tough kid for a freshman. I just think he had to give him a chance to land. But the press is starting to work a little bit on the Salukis. We're at Murray, Kentucky for college basketball tonight on ESPN. You've got a good non-conference matchup. Southern Illinois and Murray State. I'm Dave Weekly, happy to be alongside Nate Ross. Field goal shooting. Murray State still struggling, just 5 of 20 from the field. The lead was 8 at one point for the Salukis, but Murray State has cut the lead to 2 at 12 to 10. 7.51 to go until halftime. Here at the Regional Special Events Center, Mick Cronin not happy, but his racers trail by only 2. of Murray State. They've cut an eight-point deficit to only two. Saluki's lead it by two. And how about that racer press, Nate Ross? If you're Mick Cronin and you were an assistant to Bob Huggins and Rick Pitino, you better press. It's man-to-man -man with zone principles. All you want to do is create havoc. They created it. They got the turnover. It's starting to wear a little bit on the Salukis. Now, Mick Cronin worked for two years with Rick Pitino. He had a five-year stay with Bob Huggins at Cincinnati. He's from Cincinnati. His father was a longtime Cincinnati area high school coach. He comes from a basketball family. He's what you call a type A personality, Nate. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. But I'm telling you, when he spoke to his kids during practice, and then we sat around and talked to him, a whole different animal. Both teams in the bonus now. Tatum steps up and hits the front end. And uh, getting to the line is good news for Southern Illinois. They lead the Valley in free throw shooting. As a team, they shoot over 72%. And he knocks down a pair. And that's just three points. The kid's averaging almost 20 a game. You get four or five from the line, it just makes it easier. And it's really important when the, the, the player on your team who has the ball the majority of the, of the time is shooting free throws at over 80%. Hopkins on the floor. Great rebound. Back out to Pearson and a fresh 35. He found the open man. He missed, but Griffith with the big time board. Now he's too far from there to make a post move. Trying to back Falker down. 
Spins into the lane with a right hand, and that's a sweet looking shot. See, I told you he was too far away. <laughs> Walker just, they didn't double him. Normally they double him. If they're not going to double him, he's going to do that all night long. Walker can't handle it. Now Griffith has been in double figures the last three games for the Racers. He had 19 points for them in an 11 point loss at Sanford. He was the only racer to reach double figures in that game. Tatum from way downtown. <laughs> Back iron and the rebound is controlled by Young. They'll take it back outside. That's not bad. Long shots like that are going to create crazy rebounds. They just got a good bounce. Volker trying to take it to Griffith again, and this time he'll be rewarded with two free throws as Redding came over from the weak side and fouled him. You know, Griffith is starting to create a personality and a resume that don't call foul me because I'm a great shot blocker. Redding doesn't have that yet. So they call, it was a foul anyway. But Griffith's going to get away with some because he's such a great shot blocker. Redding helped many times to uh, help his teammates that time he cre created the foul. Well, Falker is just a 56% free throw shooter. He got the shooter's roll that time. A sophomore from Gateway Tech High School in St. Louis. He kind of shot puts it rather than shoots it. That was a little better, but from the heel of his hand, you can see the ball in the heel of his hand. That's not going in. We turn inside seven minutes. Stay with us in halftime. We'll get a word with the athletic director of Murray State, Alan Ward. The dunk from this crowd on the three or something because they've sat on their hands over the last couple minutes. The Salukis have really taken this crowd here in North Kentucky out of the game. Or lost the handle momentarily. How about that hustle by Young? Tipped it to Tatum. And this is the style of basketball Murray State wants to play up and down. They want a little helter skelter. That is in their advantage. They got lucky there. Lazy pass or didn't go after it. Salukis did. How about the Saluki basketball team? They come into Murray State's home gym and they hold the racers to only 12 points in the first 14 minutes of this game. And a travel is called on Pearson Griffith. That's the first time Griffith caught the ball and was a little impatient with it. He knew the doubles team and double teams coming. He knows it's coming from the baseline. He went the right way. He just did a little quickly. Now both these teams right now having trouble scoring from the field. No field goals in nearly eight minutes. Both teams right now shooting 27% from the field. It's, it's good defense. I really, I mean, yes, they're not making shots, but it's because of really good pressure, especially by Southern Illinois. Both teams are in the bonus. Shaw will take that three. He can make that shot. And he'll back down Reddick. Off the window won't good, and Redding, the leading scorer for the Racers, comes up with the rebound. Here's a chance for Murray State to tie the game with a three or get closer with a two. Here's the, here's the shot for the tie by Redding. Couldn't knock it down. Rebound by Clements. That's his spot, too, top of the circle against Eastern Kentucky. Hit a ton of them there. He'll make them. It was a good shot. They penetrated and kicked it out to the open man. Falker backing down Johnson. Kicks it back outside to Tatum. Gets a screen up top. And that call will go against Tatum. Whistled on the foul. How about the defense by Murray State? And the <laughs> first in all three of these categories at the top. Three-point D, field goal percentage, shot to, shots blocked, and obviously most of that is Griffith. But defensive rebounding and scoring defense. Yeah, they just get in your face. The full court pressure creates turnovers and easy baskets for you, and obviously no points for the opponent. Man, do they play defense. They just get in your face. Clemens had Redding just covered like a glove, and he dribbled it off his leg out of bounds. Murray State plays good defense, but it's not the same kind of defense. Southern Illinois can pass the ball where they want, when they want. The racers can't because the Salukis are just getting in their face and they're dictating the Murray State offense when they're playing defense. Murray State with 10 turnovers here on their home floor in the first half. Falker and Shaw both playing with two personal fouls and Falker puts that one up from the paint. That's a good shot over the outstretched hand of a 6-10 post play. Witherspoon did a good job to keep that ball. Salukis have led by as many as eight. The lead right now is five. When no, no, no. well, Murray State play hard, they do a great job of rotating from off the ball and almost stole that last one. He's the trap. He's open. There goes Witherspoon down the lane. Let's go, man. 
Witherspoon thought he was fouled, got the two-point goal. Perfect execution. They double-teamed the pick and roll, threw it back to the screener, who had a man coming out at him, went right by him. That's the second time Witherspoon's penetrated like that and scored. Nate, I don't care who takes it down the lane. They're going to pay for it tonight. Tatum up top for the three. <laughs> there will be no uncontested shots tonight. No, not against either of these teams. And Tatum's going to burn you from outside. Here's Hopkins. Now we're starting to loosen up a little bit. Here we go. Hopkins with a jump shot. He is a very streaky shooter, and right now he is in the zone. Now he stayed back-to-back -back field goals, but it's been a while. Tatum, throw it away. Here comes Holloway with Brooks. Two on one, Hopkins. Hopkins has two baskets in a row for the Racers. Smart play. Holloway gave it to the man who can penetrate and score when he gets bumped. Big time play. Murray stays back in it. Chris Lowry needs a timeout, and he'll take it. 3.21 to go in our first half. Tatum tried to turn the corner, and then three guys in gold shirts try to get him. Holloway over to the man who can make things happen. And Darren Darnell Hopkins with the easy two. Forced the Salukis to call timeout. Salukis are playing great defense against a half court set in the full court up and down, which is what Murray State wants to do because of turnovers or in that time, or turnovers that time or because of pressure against the press. Murray State much more relaxed, much more adept to scoring in those situations. Uh, Holloway's better known as a pure shooter, but he gave the ball to Hopkins in a good position to score. He's no dummy. Next time he'll do it, and Hopkins will hit it back when he spots up behind the three. Hey, take a look at Mick Cronin, and he recruited some terrific players at Cincinnati, like DeMar Johnson, Kenyon Martin, Reuben Patterson, Steve Logan. He can get the players. There's no question about that. Here's the trap they want in the backcourt to create a crazy pass. Now they got to scramble to pick up their men. Over and back. And the, the full-court pressure defense. You have to have both feet in the front court on the ball. He didn't. He crossed the line. Good call. Chris Lowry, the head coach of the Salukis of Southern Illinois. He knows he's in a game. Murray State at home, trailing by two. 314 to go in the first half. Southern Illinois with a two-point lead on Murray State. Pearson Griffith was born in Barbados, but he's making a living tonight in the paint. Great post moves from a variety of angles. That time he splits a double team, goes lefty. That's what he does best. He's fourth in the country. And he does it again. Blocks it. You know, Coach Cronin told us he stayed here all summer. He worked in the weight room. That's how he can score like that. And then he posts up and they don't double team him. Gets it inside. It pays off when you are a hardworking kid. We'll talk about it later. He blocks with his left hand. He doesn't do anything else left handed. He told me why he thinks he does that later on. We'll get into that. Pretty good night so far. Racers with an opportunity here to take the lead with a three-point goal and tie the game with a two. They've trailed by as many as eight to the visiting Salukis of Southern Illinois from Carbondale. We just wanted to drive in and cut the lane off. There he goes. Griffith again, as on, on cue. Ball deflected out of bounds, and the racers will have it. Witherspoon is such a good athlete, along with, excuse me, number 44, um, Witherspoon, along with the other guys like Justin Orr, that he can get in there to keep the ball alive on the offensive glass. He's done it a couple times tonight. Holloway. You can see the form. He can really shoot around the rim and out. Boyle and Foster back on the floor for the Saluki. Holloway's going to make a lot of shots in his career here. He just needs to get a little roll going as a young kid, as a freshman, to get a little confidence. And 14 points against Moorhead State. Didn't play much at all in the last two games against Jacksonville State. And at Sanford. That's a travel on Foster. Jennifer just chased Tatum around for about 20 seconds. Now he's got to handle the ball. He's got to be tired because Tatum doesn't get tired. This game has been a defensive clinic to this point. Let's go, set up the shooter. Let's go, Holloway covered by Brooks. Brooks Let's continues go, to get serious go. minutes here on the road in the first half for the Salukis. Witherspoon went in the lane. Boy, the Salukis really defend well in the paint. Yeah. Murray State's getting good shots, but because everyone's contested, it doesn't take much to knock it off. The 6'10 man with the ball 30 feet from the basket. I don't think that's what they want. 
No team scored more than 55 points in the last four games against the Salukis. All Southern Illinois wins. Salukis haven't had a defensive stretch like that since Walt Frazier and company won the NIT. That was great defense by Jennifer. He grabbed his hand, too. But if you can stay, keep up with Tatum's quicks, you are doing a heck of a job defensively. They called the foul on him. And unfortunately, because of the bonus, he's going to go to the line. Uh, Tatum's going to step back up to the free throw line. And we talked in the open about how Murray State doesn't go to the free throw line, only 98 attempts all year. Tatum, coming into the game, had 50 attempts by himself. So you can tell he holds the ball a lot, and he goes to the rim, and he gets fouled, and he's a pretty good free throw shooter, 82%. Tatum earns the bonus. He really worked hard during the offseason. Jennifer, that's his third foul, so he's going to be down for a while. That's not good if you're a racer fan. Tatum really worked hard because now he's kind of taken over the scoring reins from Darren Brooks, who won back-to-back -back Valley Player of the Year awards. Well, Trey Pearson, preseason player of the year in the OVC. Here's his shot with his teammate Jennifer in a little foul trouble. Yeah, he's working on a freshman, but not any ordinary freshman. Oh, another terrific block in this game. Foster this time, two on one. Tatum led the break, and the finish is up and good by Tony Young. And the racers compound the problem by throwing the ball away on the other end. Well, Redding thought he had an easy shot to turn into a layup for the Salukis because he faded away against a 6'10 player. Not a good idea. And then they threw it away on the press. Or excuse me, in transition. This is a big last minute and, and, and a little bit of change. Murray State can't lose their concentration and they're going to get down here by a bundle. Salukis can match their largest lead with a conversion on this trip as we get ready to go under one minute to play. And there's an offensive foul. I think it was on Boyle, 35 at the elbow on PA. Yep, it was Boyle. Coach is screaming at him. It's got to be on him. That's a big mistake with a chance to really bury your opponent in the first half. They turned it over and give Murray State the ball back. We'll talk with the athletic director of Murray State, Alan Ward, coming up at the half. So stay with us. We'll also check highlights and scores from both the Ohio Valley Conference and the Missouri Valley Conference. This is the first real night of conference play in the Valley. And that foul is going to be... They're going to catch Mullins on that one? Mullins or Foster? Yes, yeah, Mullins. Mullins. Once again, Witherspoon thought he had a lane, and he can go by most people, but when it's a double team, they just grab him. So Witherspoon will step up. He's the team captain. Had a season-high 22 points against Eastern Kentucky in the, the last ESPNU game for the Racers. And now Redding is back in. I would think if they score here on the free throw, you're going to see a little full-court action on 94-foot defense. That's why he put Redding in to do that. Witherspoon, that is just his eighth free throw of the year. We mm -hmm. talked about it, Nate. The Racers just have not been getting to the free throw line at all in mm -hmm. the early part of the regular season. Turnover would be big right here. Boy, Tatum, look at those four wheels. He is so quick. You're not going to get him to turn it over. He gets a full head of steam up. Now you need to stop if you Murray State get the crowd into it. Whether you score or not at the other end, it gives Coach something positive to talk about in the locker room. Got about a 13-second differential, so the Salukis will just run their offense here. And Mullins, and that's, that's a jump ball, and the possession error will go with Southern Illinois. Yeah, Tatum dribbled. He put Mullins in a bad spot. He dribbled to the corner, handed it to him, and then ran away from him. It was just a natural double team, a natural trap. 16 seconds left on the shot clock. Salukis with the ball and a four-point lead, trying to win their fifth in a row. And there was a foul on the dish. Well, I thought they were going to call Mullins on the travel. It's Johnson. No, Redding. So Redding is whistled for his person, first personal, and Foster will head to the line. Sophomore from Columbia, Missouri. That's a plus if you're Murray State. At least the, the worst they're going to give up is one. And now, you're not, you know you're not going to get pressed, so you got 21 seconds to get the best shot you can get. And to that end, Redding comes off the floor, and Holloway comes back yeah, on. Put the three-point shooter, especially if they collapse if it goes inside. One more for Foster. 
one of two, and the lead is five. Shot clock is off. Final 20 seconds of the first half. Penetrate and dish. Find a shooter or get it inside the big guy. Your choice. Paul away with a screen at the top, and he hits a big three. They didn't guard him. You gotta guard him. He's the best three-point shooter in the moment. Tatum needs to get something to the rim. It was on time, but offline, and we have come to the end of the first half. Big finish for Murray State. Jamal Tatum leaves the floor for the Salukis with nine points. But it was a big three-point goal by Tyler Holloway with less than 10 seconds to go in our first half that pulls the racers to within two points. Our halftime activities are next for Murray, Kentucky. At the break, Southern Illinois leads Murray State 25-23. Southern Illinois leads Murray State 25-23. We are set to begin our second half. Saluki's led by eight on a couple of occasions in the first half, but Murray State came back late in the first half. High point men, Jamal Tatum with nine points, and Pearson Griffith, he has been a force in the paint. Six points, three of four from the field for the Racers. Murray State will have the basketball as we begin our second half. They had trouble against the half-court D, but they got transition stuff. See if they can score against a half-court defense, and it will really help them. Boy, Saluki's really streaky as far as field goals made in the first half. That long stretch in the middle of the first half where they couldn't get anything to go. Redding with a three-point attempt offline from the top of the key to start the second half. And here comes Southern Illinois with the basketball. Redding's a kid that was shooting 50% from three, but cleaning his game, too. Walker inside, counted, and a foul, and Griffith whistled on the personal. See, that's what I'm talking about. That's what Griffith needs to do. Falker got that ball at a point where he didn't have to do anything with it except shoot it. He didn't have to dribble. He didn't have to drop step because he got such great position, and Griffith gave him the position. Look where he gets it. He's in the lane initially. That's great position. Griffith can't let that happen, but he's got to learn from it. Griffith's got to do that at the other end because he'll dunk it every time when he gets it that tight. So less than 30 seconds into our second half, Griffith picks up his second personal foul. Falker completes the three-point lead, three-point play, and the lead is five. Falker had 16 points against Kent State. It's called, the, Sha the, it's called the Shaquille principle. <laughs> you get it that close, you just dunk it. Pearson for three. And maybe that might be the shot to get him out of his extended shooting slump for the Racers. Pearson did not start this game. The preseason player of the year selection in the Ohio Valley Conference has been coming off the bench lately. Here's Shaw. Shaw misses the shot or the rebound. Shaw spent a lot of time on the bench in the first half with two personal fouls. Well, Keith Jennifer in foul trouble didn't start this half. Pearson's got to do his thing. Great pass. Withers better gives pass. it up to win it. In the first half, that turned the crowd on. Great play, best possession of the game. Made basket by the Racers allows Murray State to employ their full court pressure D. You can't slow him down, folks. I don't care how many guys you brought him here. Tatum oh. nearly threw that one away. Mullins to Shaw alone on the baseline. He'll take it and he'll hit it. That's it. That's the press is going to create those kind of opportunities. That's not bad. You speed the tempo up. You almost got a turnover. Get out of there, get out of there. It's a trap. Somebody's open. Or take shot at the baseline. Spinning, wild looking shot. He's got it to go in. Oh. 7.39 in sleeves, Dave. That's the only reason you get that shot off. That was a great shot. If that's the one where you're sitting on the bench saying, oh my God, great shot. The pace has quickly. We are tied at 30. Tatum picks up the dribble. Now he needs help. Great rotation to help out. Falker, nice bounce pass in the paint. And Griffith just picked up his third. Yeah, they got him up in the air. You get a shot blocker up in the air. That's where he's vulnerable. He's going to have to come out now. This is a great pass from Murray State. This is a good shot. This is a great shot. Bam, with the big dunk. Sharing the basketball. Now watch this. This is your typical jump shot. Falling away, leaning back, nothing but the net. That's big time. That's the kind you make in horse to win a burger in the summertime. So Johnson comes on, and Griffith will leave the floor for the racers. And Mick Cronin has his emotions on his sleeve over there on the racers' bench. His racers got off to a quick start, but then two quick fouls by the, the post force for the racers and he'll go to the bench for a while in his mind 
Coach is going to coach Kearns got to decide when do I go back with Griffith? Long way to go. Unfortunately, he's got to sit for a lot of time. Shaw on Witherspoon. Or with a quick first step. Hit a tough jumper from the baseline a moment ago. Here's Pearson. An open look out of the corner would not go down for Orr. Witherspoon misfires on the offensive rebound. Racers another opportunity. Pearson from the top. Ooh. You know, the difference in the first two possessions, Dave, Murray State gets the ball where they want it. The Saluki's pressure has not affected them whatsoever in the half court. They're getting offensive rebounds, and they're turning this place on. Racer fans getting back into the flow of this game. Murray State now in front by a point. And Shaw threw it away. Salukis don't want to play at this pace. That's an uncharacteristic offensive possession. They want to take their time. They didn't have to that time. Great pass on the offensive rebound. Created it. And as you said, it might turn Pearson on at back-to-back -back threes. Oh. Good hustle. Great save. Witherspoon with a basketball. Back to Pearson to reset the offense. Murray State in front for the first time in a long time. Or thinks he can beat Mullen one oh, one. He what just a great did. crossover. Oh, Pearson. What a shot. Well, we said that first three he hit to start the second half may open up the floodgates, and now he has put up eight quick points here in the second half, and the lead for the Racers is three. That's why he's a preseason player here in the OVC. The kid can play. Falter. That ball was partially blocked on the way to the rim, and it belongs to Murray State. What a great first four minutes for the Racers. Whoa. Austin Brooks checks in for the Salukis, but the fans are on their feet. Pearson, the crossover. It's a killer. It's two points for Murray State, and the Racers are in front at home by three. State fans having a good time here early in the second half. Their racers are back in front. A three-point lead, and Trey Pearson led the way. Big-time jumper there. Yeah, he can shoot. Witherspoon on the follow. They kick it back out. Another three for... Another Trey for Trey. And watch this. Not one crossover, two crossovers. There's one, there's two. Jumper, nothing but net. The kid is hot, and his team is hot. Trey Pearson, eight points tonight. Consider last time out at Sanford, two points in 32 minutes. He was one for eight from the field, 0 of five on his three-point attempts. But uh, he got the wake-up call at halftime. That's eight points in his last three shots. Three, three, and two. Trey for Trey, I like that. Johnson. Great pass. Oh, to Witherspoon. Johnson had him. Witherspoon had the presence of mind to make a great backdoor cut and a great pass, big man to big man. A classic give and go. And the lead is five for the Racers. And Tatum quickly into the front court for the salute. The stop here would really be big at this point in the game. Here's Shaw. He got the Ooh. And that's an offensive foul called against Shaw. You can see Winterspoon cutting Johnson just turned and gave it to him. A great foul, a little reverse layup. Great play. And at the other end, Shaw was getting the ball taken away, elbowed him, got the offensive foul. Well, Jennifer back on the floor. He's playing with three personal fouls. Shaw now on the Saluki bench with three. Well, that was a tough call against Shaw. Yeah, Coach Cronin talked about when Jamal Tatum and Shaw aren't scoring, I can't play them together. Well, guess what? Jamal Tatum scoring. I'm sorry, Trey Pearson and Jennifer aren't scoring together. Pearson's scoring, Jennifer gets going, they got it golden. Witherspoon with a good look from the wing. How about Falker? A terrific block, and he sends it into press row. That's a big time block. Falker has got some hops. Yeah, he's a super athlete. Murray in the midst of a 9 2 run, trying to add to it as we turn under 15 minutes to go in regulation. Pearson and Tatum. Terrific quickness in those pairs. And there's the tap up and in by Johnson. It's a great move by Pearson just to get a shot off. And then Johnson, Witherspoon, their big time athletes. Look at his hustle. Look at the bodies on the floor. Got to recover now. Brooks, the dish. Foul on Redding, a hard foul as Foster goes to the floor. 
This is a Murray State kind of tempo, though. This is what Mick Cronin wants. Get up and down the court, helter skelter. My athletes are going to beat your athletes if it happens so far. So good for Murray State. Tatum gets it knocked loose, and now it's just it's playground time. <laughs> Ball's on the ground. Everybody's diving for it. Nice pass inside. Great pass, and then the hammer. Jamal Foster's going in the line. Foster. I heard, I heard Pat Rowley with a great quote earlier. Basketball games are won when the ball's in the air and when it's on the floor. That ball's on the floor and everybody was diving after it. Murray State made the great plays, but the Salukis had their composure to get it, get to the rim, get fouled, one free throw chance for a second. That's a great quote, and it's so true. Oh, absolutely. Hopkins and Orr return for the Racers. 39-34. Look at full court. Boy, this is unusual. Not a press, just a little... Just showing you on there. Slows down the fast break and transition. Boy, how about Mullins with those hands? Quick hands and quick feet. He, does, he looks like you go by him. You can't. Or Too much Young, dribbling. Great defense. Too much dribbling out there. They're not passing the ball. Or got stuck with the ball and turned it over. Too much dribbling. 13 turnovers now, coast to coast. Tatum is in, Tatum is in double figures now for the Salukis. And they'll go to the full court pressure again. We're seeing Trey Pearson and Jamal Tatum, two phenomenal athletes in two different leagues, putting on a show. Mullins may be just a freshman, but he is solidly built. Oh, there, Johnson, they got him. Nice look inside. Johnson uses his body as a shield, and he's able to finish for the Racers. That time it was Redding to Johnson. Last time it was Johnson and Witherspoon. They're finding each other. Great transition offense. Volker reaching up and nearly put the hook down, and he draws the foul from Johnson. It's a big time shot. He does. Volker does a phenomenal job of getting position. Where he doesn't, you know, you always want big kids to make a move. If you get position that deep in the lane, you don't have to make a move. All you got to do is turn and shoot, and that's what he did. No foul. So Volker heads back up to the free throw line for two. This is the first of a big week of non-conference basketball. Remember here Falker, at Murray State. Excuse me, Volker shot those left hand. He's a right-handed player. Interesting, coming back at the big man. And Griffith on the floor. Mick Cronin puts him back in there with three personal fouls. Johnson checks out. Falker tonight, half dozen points and four rebounds. Big game tonight here in Murray. Murray State hosting Southern Illinois. And then Friday night, Rice comes in. The Owls of Conference USA, and they already own a triple overtime win against Utah earlier this season. And that ball will stay with the Salukis off the missed free throw. Rebound tapped out of bounds. Well, it hit an extra time on the rim and nobody grabbed it. Drives a coach nuts when you have inside position, as Mick Cronin's team did there, and didn't get the defensive board. Offensive rebounding isn't any skill. Offensive rebounding is just hard. You just got to want it more than anybody else. Chris Lowry, Salukis would like to get a little closer. Here's Tatum, already in double figures. There's a guy who can get you closer quickly. Oh, you can pick a two up there. And a travel. Murray State's upcoming schedule. Rice comes in, and they get back into OVC play. Home games with Tennessee State, SEMO, Eastern Illinois. We'll be right back here January the 12th for their game with Austin P on ESPNU. Hopkins for three. Online, but too strong. Falker really a presence here in the early moments of the second half. A strong rebound for the Salukis. Big strong kid. He's using his athleticism against a very athletic Murray State team. It's Falker's fifth rebound. Here's Tatum on the pull-up. Pop for three. That was a long shot. No good. Rebound by Jennifer. Hopkins. Tough pass to Orr. And it goes right through the hands of Griffith. Two on one. Back the other way. Mullins. 4-2. Timeout, Murray State. Keith Jennifer couldn't do anything. He's got three fouls. He had to let him go. Easy bucket for Mullins. Racers need a timeout. Southern Illinois led by as many as eight points in the first half. Now they trail by three on the road to Murray State. Murray State with a three-point lead. Murray State leads the OVC in total assists and assists per game, and they're moving the ball around very well here in the second half. Murray State didn't get this kind of rotation against the defense in the first half. 
It goes up top to Redding, and then he can move faster than Jamal Foster can get there on defense inside the Johnson easy layup. When the defense is scrambling, you can pass the ball faster than a human being can move. That's physics, by the way. <laughs> and it's just a great play. You can just do it. Shooting. And look at Murray State, how they have uh, improved their shooting in the second half. 32% in the first half, 8 of 14 from the second. Mick Cronin, boy, the last time we were in here for that ESPNU game against Eastern Kentucky, they shot 62% from the field for the game. It's only the second time in the Mick Cronin era they had been over 60%. Griffith inside. Now that's a, a high percentage shot. He didn't have to do anything but shoot the ball. He got great position. It's tough to get people to play defense on a guy that doesn't have the ball, especially in the post. But that's what you have to do. He's going to kill you all night like that. Boy, Mullins, a strong move to get into the front court. Next year, he'll score there. As a freshman, he just got it across, and he was happy. I was surprised. He didn't go right to the back. Yeah, I thought he was going to. Left-hander on the left side. It would have been a natural. Oh, great job running four. around. Now, Griffith played with three personal fouls, was able to deflect, deflect that ball away from Folker. Running around Eleven. the post. Tough to do. 11.55 to go in our second half. Murray State trailed at the break, but the Racers have a five-point lead now on Southern Illinois. Murray State with a five-point lead on Southern Illinois, and one of the members of the, the dance, the Racer Girls, will never forget this game as she uh, was in, she got engaged in our commercial break. Yes, game. she did. And she's got the ring. You see, there it is. Nice. <laughs> nice. Her boyfriend came out in the middle of their dance routine, got down on one knee, and she figured, yeah, what is he doing? See, there there's the boyfriend. Right there. I think he got a good deal there. Oh, heck yeah. He's got that Johnny Damon lookalike. Yeah, there you the ex, go. The ex-Johnny Damon. Well, Johnny Damon could afford a bunch of rings. Yes, he as could. As a good member of the New York Yankees. We're in Murray, Kentucky for this non-conference basketball game. Southern Illinois and Murray State. I'm Dave Weekly, happy to be alongside Nate Ross. 11.55 to go in the second half. And Murray State, they trailed at the break by two, but now lead by five. The Salukis in the maroon and white and black with the basketball. Young could not hit the three-point attempt. Oh, Griffith did a great job to deflect that ball to a teammate. Pearson coming alive offensively here in the second half for the Racers. Be careful, that cross-court pass almost got taken away by Taylor. Salukis have played tough man-to-man -to -man defense the entire game. Witherspoon, Pearson, nearly had his third triple of the second half, and the ball belongs to Southern Illinois. They got him, they got the Salukis scrambling that time, and they got their best, their hot man Pearson wide open, just didn't hit the shot, but that's what they want. They don't like the scramble part because they almost had a turnover, but that's what they want to get Pearson with the open three. Young will take a seat. And Jamal Tatum, one of the most entertaining players in college basketball, is back on the floor for Southern Illinois. He can play for a lot of people in this country. Almost a five-second call, they got the timeout. But Tatum's a special kind of player. He's exceptionally quick, and he's a great shooter. He's got the complete package. The kid really can play for anybody, and I am sure that Chris Lowry is happy to have him on his team. ESPN News coverage of college basketball continues in the new year as the Michigan Wolverines face it, face it. Marco Killingsworth and the Indiana Hoosiers college basketball on ESPNU Tuesday night at 6 p.m. Eastern. Interesting story. Remember you were talking. You asked uh, Coach Larry, how did you get Jamal Tatum? He said, we thought we'd recruit him, but we, we didn't think we'd get him. We thought he'd go much higher than us. Royalty count. They just stuck with him. They got a phenomenal player at this level. Yep, and, and Kevin was uh, telling us, or Chris, Chris Lowry was telling us earlier today, that he was on him from his sophomore year. So this wasn't a situation where Southern Illinois swooped in at the last minute on a wing and a prayer. They, they knew all about Jamal Tatum, and they spent a lot of time with him, and he has turned out to be a terrific player. Paid off. Mullins. Mullins got good penetration. The dish off to Clemens, who took it hard to the hole, and he will go to the free throw line. You know, when Mick Cronin was talking about his press here there with his kids, he tried to emphasize that, yes, we want traps, but we want traps from the side and from behind. That time, Mullins went 85 feet with the basketball. Nobody, not only did they not trap him, they didn't even slow him down. And he got the ball 
easily over to Wesley Clemens at the end. He's got hammered and going to line for two, obviously missed the first one. And now Griffith has four personal fouls and will have to leave the lineup. That is a huge blow to the racers. Well, Johnson did a heck of a job last time for a short period of time. Unfortunately, he's over 11 minutes to go. He's going to have to do it for an extended period of time now. And Clemens missed the second free throw. Without Griffith in the game, everybody's got to turn up to D. Nice pass. Pearson. Witherspoon likes to tee up that three from the wing. Smart play. Got nothing. Get a better one. Spread the floor a little bit. Here's Witherspoon. Takes it to the baseline. Shot won't go. Loose ball controlled by Falker. Witherspoon made a smart play there. He would have charged if he went to the basket. He stopped and shot the 8-10 footer. Mullins. He just don't take it from him. Mullins goes where he wants, when he wants. Boy, Tatum could just run all day. Got a good look at a shot, would not go down. And Tatum misfired on the shot from the wing and then commits the foul. I tell you, you know, that's impressive just where he shot a three from the left wing high and went to the right baseline and almost got the, uh, the offensive rebound. That's some quicks and that's some great being in great shape. As you said, he can run all day. He's a dedicated kid. Justin Orr back on the floor. Hopkins will take a seat. And Tatum loves the training regiment of Richard Hamilton of the Detroit Pistons. Really inspired by the way Rip Hamilton plays the game in such terrific physical condition. And, and Tatum really learns something from that. He gets to bed every night by 11 o'clock, watches what he eats. There's four for three. And Tatum seems appropriate. We're talking about him. And he gets the rebound and brings the ball into the front court for the Salukis. They ask him to do a lot, and he's exceptionally capable physically and mentally. He's 3.9 student. Right. Mullins pass picked off by Orr. Two on one. Jennifer puts it in. Jennifer, of course, is transfer from Virginia, and he was a great player there. A lot more playing time now here. Largest lead of the game for Murray State. They've got a seven-point advantage. Out of the corner, three-point goal by Wesley Clemens, and the Salukis needed that. You know, Justin Orr got stuck in traffic and never got out there on Clemens. Wide open three, and he stuck it. Clemens from Northwest High School in Indianapolis, same high school as Rodney Carney of the Memphis Tigers. And boy, did they have a big oh. win last night against Gonzaga. What a great game. Great atmosphere, too. And Mullins is whistled on the personal as Jennifer tries to kick, make the quick move up top. Shaw returns, and Young also back on the floor for the Salukis. Well, Dave, it hasn't happened yet, and it's not going to happen to Tatum, but sometimes those kind of fouls are because you're a little bit fatigued. And there's only nine minutes to go in a the game. These guys have been busting their hump for 40 for 30 minutes, a little over 30 minutes, and playing very hard. Fatigue might be a factor if with everybody except number three in the Maroons. He makes a foul because he wants to, not because he's tired. Jennifer. Oh, what a move. Great move all the way to the basket and got it in. Great drop step and covered a lot of distance for separation from the defender and a great play by Jennifer. Murray State's largest lead was seven a moment ago. Now they are up by six, eight and a half to play in regulation. This is the kind of game you get a sense of that's going to go down to the wire here in Murray, Kentucky tonight. Absolutely. Tatum. Clemens hit a three just moments ago. You see the shot clock, and Tatum's got the rock when it counts. Pulls the trigger and hits. That's a three. He just took Trey Pearson, gave him a little shoulder fake. Pearson went for it, and he's just too quick. If you don't, if you go for the first fake, you're dead against him. That's a big time play. Tatum's got 14 to lead all scores. Jennifer for three. Rebound up and no good for Redding. And it'll stay with the Racers. It's big time play without Griffith in the game. Redding, Johnson, or they're going to the offensive last. So far, so good. Redding and Mick Croden hatching some strategy in the racer bench area. This second half, Murray State has put the pedal to the metal. 7.49 to go in our second half. The racers 
lead the Salukis. And Jamal Tatum, 47-44. Great to be back in Murray, Kentucky. And there you see Popeye Jones. His number hanging in the rafters, 54 he wore when he played for the Racers. There you see the years, 88 through 92. Led the nation in rebounding in one of those seasons. Just edged out a guy, a, a big guy from LSU, Shaquille O'Neal, by less than a rebound. And Jones just got his undergrad degree from Murray State. 1,374 rebounds in his career. That's going after it, folks. There you see the rebounds. Murray State with the big edge on Southern Illinois by 10. And they've got the lead. Redding has been relatively quiet offensively tonight. He came into this game leading the Racers in scoring. And that ball deflected by Young off Pearson. <laughs> Boy, tough night for the coaches. This one is hanging in the balance. And Nate, uh, you spend plenty of time on the bench. You can relate. Let me tell you something. Every night's a tough night for the coaches. I don't care if you're winning or losing. It's tough. A lot easier after you win, but during the game, it's a war. Nothing like it, though. Greatest game there is. A three would tie the game for the Salukis. Tatum with 14 points tonight. Nearly had 17 in the cylinder and spun out for him. He gets great elevation, but he gets up so quick that you just can't go up there with him. You know, we're talking about the tradition of Murray State. How about this Saluki tradition? Four straight trips to the NCAA tournament. Four straight Missouri Valley Conference regular season championships. Hopkins, short side of the rim, no good. And the rebound by Young. Out quickly to Tatum. Saluki's got to the tournament last year, won their opening round game against St. Mary's. But Johnson did it. Oh, he got the timeout, got the timeout, and the Racers will keep the ball. Johnson did a great job on defense, fronting the post inside and not allowing an easy pass. Ball was slapped around, and then, as you said, he got the timeout afterwards. But a great job without the big guy in the game. Look at this. Watch this inside. You can't see the beginning of it, but he flips it around and then saves it as he goes out of bounds. That's Orr saves it, calls a timeout. Well, that's a tough call. He never had the balls. He's going out of bounds. Southern Illinois, four consecutive Missouri Valley regular season championships. Only They're the only so-called mid-major to get four at-large bursts to the tournament in a row. Just what I was going to say. In a league like the uh, OVC or like the Missouri Valley, if you can win the regular season and not get beat in the first round of the tournament, easy to say, tough to do. You're going to get in that large bid, and that's exactly what they've done. They haven't won the tournament, but they've been phenomenal in the regular season. And we talked about the, the great RPI of their league. That helps those people on that selection committee. They love to see that. If this holds, this is going to be a big win for Murray State, beating a team with such a high RPI. All right. You can see that Southern Illinois coming up with some opportunities to be seen on ESPNU. They'll open Valley Conference play this weekend against Drake, Wichita State. That game will be on ESPNU at Indiana State. Well, I Indiana, the Hoosiers couldn't win at Indiana State. We'll see how Southern Illinois does there on January the 5th. January the 8th, another ESPNU opportunity for Southern Illinois against the Bradley Braves. Larry Legend, the, the, the era of Larry Legend is paying off. They haven't been beaten yet. Boy, what a year it's been in, in the Missouri Valley when you take a look at Northern Iowa and Indiana State and Missouri State and Creighton. And, uh, you know, we're not even talking about Southern Illinois yet. That's exactly right. Only three teams ahead of them in the conference RPI. Who are they? Big Ten, ACC, and Big East. That's pretty good. Witherspoon, this is a three. Boy, Clemens has really been aggressive around the rim here in the last few minutes for the Salukis. And speaking of the Valley, this is really the first big night of conference play. And Bradley takes care of Northern Iowa. Creighton a winner over Missouri State tonight in the Valley. Drake wins at Evansville. Wichita State hands Indiana State their first loss of the year. Meet you at the rim. Falker will go to the line for two. That's foul the, on Witherspoon. That's the kind of things you get in transition offensively when you're playing against the Murray State. You've got to attack the basket, and you better go to your big guy, Falker. If you break the press, you can't set things up. You've got to attack. That's exactly what they did, trying to cut this lead to one if you mention both. 
Rattles in the first. Another one is coming. Murray State averaging almost 83 points a game at home so far this season. Right now they're sitting on 47. And with a little over six minutes to go in regulation, the racers don't have anybody in double figures. Now we're getting the playmaker time. Somebody's going to have to make a play diving on the floor, getting a big rebound, hitting a three, and turn the momentum a little bit. We're in Murray, Kentucky tonight for college basketball on ESPNU. The Salukis of Southern Illinois taking on the Murray State Racers, the Ohio Valley Conference, with Nate Ross on Dave Weekly. Get right down to it. Two-point game. Murray State, another turnover. The Salukis with a chance to tie or take the lead on this trip. Yeah, they tried to get into Johnson, but it wasn't there. He tried to force it, made it too far of a pass. Easy turnover for Salukis. Tough night for Matt Shaw. For, for Shaw, 32. Played most of the first half in foul trouble. Look at those bodies on the floor. There it is. Win the game on the floor. When the ball's on the floor, when it's in the air. It's a jump ball, but it's great hustle. I can't see who it was there. I think it was Witherspoon. Yeah, it was. No, it wasn't. It was Orr. Back down on the floor, number 25 to get it. Possession error will stay with this end. In the OVC, UT Martin loses to Purdue of the Big Ten. Michigan State takes care of Tennessee Tech. Austin P defeats Middle Tennessee State. Southeast Missouri State loses at Illinois in a game seen earlier tonight on ESPNU. Missouri takes on Eastern Illinois, and Iowa defeats Tennessee State. You are not going to stop Mr. Tatum when he gets his shoulders past you. You, you, you stopped him by fouling him, but you're not going to stop him from doing what he wants to do. He's going to his left. He's a right-hander, but watch him when he turns the corner. He just blows by everybody. Tatum can tie the game with two here. He goes to the left hand. That's a pretty quick player, Trey Pearson trying to get him, but Tatum just quicker than quick. Got to the foul line, going to try to finish it up for two for two. Tatum started the night in second place in scoring in the Missouri Valley. One of two, and he won't miss very often from the line. Five of six from the strike tonight. It's a one-point game. Big man Griffith back in there. With a gamble by Coach Brandon. And it's Tatum. Whistled on the foul. And that's his third. And the Bronx cheer comes up from the racer fans. Only the fourth team foul of the half. We said Murray State doesn't go to the line much. They've continued that trend tonight. Saluki's already in the bonus. Murray State with 18 fouls. As we turn under five minutes to play in regulation. Another turnover. Shaw came up with the steal. Back the other way. Four on two. Tatum. That's one of the toughest shots in basketball. The stop on a dime in the paint. And he did it with ease. That's exactly right. You've got to dribble 75 feet, stop and go up. Hardest thing to do. Shaw with another steal. Two more for the Salukis. The traffic is killing Murray State right now. Most Coach Cronin wants to talk about it. They talked about it in practice. They just can't deal with it right now. Timeout. Racers. Mick Cronin has seen a seven-point lead here in the second half evaporate. And the Salukis are back in front. You know, Coach Lefty Dujel used to talk about game slippage. Watch the, the, the steal happen right there. And there's Tatum going for it. Dribbles about 80 feet, stops on a dime, goes over or easy eight-foot jumper. But the other part isn't easy. And now the traps killed him. There's a turnover. There goes Mullen down the floor. Easy basket. That was Shaw, excuse me. And then another steal for another basket, and Murray State had to stop it. They know they're getting trapped, but I was talking about game slippers. Coach Lefty Dujel used to talk about it. You talk about it in practice, you know what's happening, but in a game, in the heat of the game, you forget things. That run right there is killing the Murray State racers so far. 12-4 run since Pearson Griffith picked up his fourth personal foul. You know you're getting trapped, you've got to deal with it and penetrate. Here's Pearson. Kicks it back outside. Redding just has not had it tonight. 
for the racers. One and done. Saluki's again. Another reminder, they do not have a player on this roster over 6'7", yet the, there was nothing but maroon around the basket. Oh, another great one if you're a Saluki fan. They don't have any seniors on scholarship. Tatum for three. That would have been really big. Griffith the rebound. And Mullins is called on the foul. No seniors on this basketball team. It looks good in Salukiville in the future. Heck, it's looked good for the last four years. It just doesn't get any worse. It gets better. Five team fouls now. The seniors on the team are non-scholarship players. Big contributors in practice, big contributors on the court sometimes. But that just gives you more scholarships down the road when you don't have any seniors. Back outside. You just don't beat the Slugs off the dribble. That's a great that's a great compliment to it to give a defense. They just don't get beat off the dribble. I love their in-your-face man-to-man. Three on the way. Would not go. Redding has just not had it tonight from outside. Great shooters. Dave have lousy memories. They got, he's got to keep shooting because he is a good shooter, just not having a good night hey, yet. That's what he's on the floor to do. Exactly right. And I watched him. He dropped his head a little bit, but he wasn't really upset. He just figured I'll make the next one. That's what you got to believe. It's a big trip for the Salukis. It's a one-possession game right now. Inside of 10 on the shot clock. Tatum. Tough shot. Pearson with the great defense. Long outlet pass to Redick. Good catch. Pearson did a great job to get that ball. Here's Redding. Another three. And it hit that one. I'm telling you, great shooters have lousy memories. They have to, especially in this game, because you get an opportunity just like that maybe 10 seconds later. A three-point goal by Redding out of the corner. Ties the game at 50 at the three-minute mark. We didn't expect anything less. And Chris Lowry wants a timeout. Redding with a huge three for the racers of Murray State. And we are all tied up at 50. 2.42 to go in regulation. The pull-up by Tatum. And on the other end, a clutch shot from outside the arc by Redding. All right, Nate, put your whistle on. What are they talking about in the Saluki's huddle right now? Well, Redding is the first three he's made all night. They've played great defense. They got to concentrate on rotation because the only way they've been beat is when Murray State moved the ball quicker than they could move. If everybody plays solid man-to-man, -man, then that won't happen. Defensively is where one of these teams is going to win the basketball game because points, it's 50-50. It's not been a great offensive game, but that's because of the defense. They can't give up second shots, and you can see the assistant coach putting his hand up right there. you got to contest every shot. Well, you can see the timeouts. Southern Illinois has two. Murray State has one remaining. And if you're Mick Cronin, you got to love this position. You really haven't shot the ball well. You really haven't played that well here at home. But here, you're in your building. You've got the game tied with less than three minutes to go. There's your timeouts and stuff. The thing Coach Cronin's got to be a little concerned with, I would think, is if I trap and press full court, they've gotten some easy opportunities. And with a little over two and a half to go in a tie game, you don't want to give them those easy opportunities anymore. Tatum has 17 points. He's got the basketball. He goes by Pearson, and Pearson commits the foul. And that will put Tatum back on the line. Team foul number nine against Murray State. You just can't stop Jamal Tatum with one person when he wants to drive. That's what he did right there. Still have to write our final chapter tonight in Murray, Kentucky. 2.37 to go. Southern Illinois and the Racers tied at 50. Two and a half minutes to play. Murray State and Southern Illinois all knotted up at 50. Now, the Racer Arena used to be one of the toughest places to play in the entire nation. They moved over to the Regional Special Events Center on November 14, 1998. The first game was between our two participants tonight. And Murray State prevailed in that game, 65-62. And you could see Murray State all time in this building, an outstanding 86-15. Neither team loses at home 
in any game, let alone the game between the, between themselves and their opponent. So, and what about the home court advantage that Southern Illinois has in Carbondale? Missed the front end of the one and one. So Tatum's missed two free throws in a row, and those were big ones. You know, it's almost a double-edged sword with Griffith in the game. He's not a good free throw shooter. As you get down the stretch, you might take him out. Southern Illinois has won 36 consecutive games in Missouri Valley play on their home floor. Redding again. He had a big three moments ago. Missed fired that time. Here come the Salukis with a chance to take the lead. He misses. He doesn't miss by a lot. He's got to contain this man. Don't let Tatum get to the end because he's going to get fouled. Tatum tonight, 5 of 16 from the field, 2 of 8 from outside the arc. But he has been the man to take the clutch shots when the shot clock has been winding down for Southern Illinois. Trey Pearson on him most of the night. Tatum. Back iron. Long on the three-point attempt. Loose ball. And the Racers have it. Great hustle to get on the floor by Mr. Redding there. Big possession and the fans know it. Oh, it's wide open. Pearson off the glass, wouldn't go. Walker the rebound. He has been so tough around the glass. Everybody's tired now. That's when all the summer workouts, all the preseason stuff pays off. Mick Cronin imploring the fans here to get on their feet and make some noise. Closing in on 60 seconds to play in regulation. Tatum, 10 on the shot clock. The dish to Walker. Oh, watch down the lane. Oh, talk about score with emphasis. Holy moly. A terrific give and go, and Folker's dunk has given the Salukis a two point lead. Timeout, Murray State. Timeout, Murray State. And what a, a big game this is going to be in terms of the RPI. This would be a a tough loss for the Missouri Valley Conference if the Racers could pull this one out. But right now, the Salukis, and this is the basket of the game. You want to so see far. scoring with emphasis? Watch this. Get out of the way. Holy Christmas, what a great play by a great athlete. Nice pass by Tatum, and he says, nobody's denying me. I'm going to be the playmaker at the end of the game. Falker with the big time dunk. Every team in the Missouri Valley Conference right now has a winning record. Take a look at that league. They have so many terrific wins. Northern Iowa with a win over Iowa, with a win over LSU. Here's the reset. The possession error goes the racer's way. Dave. Murray State out of timeout. Salukis have two left. But big point there, Dave. Southern Illinois, only five team fouls. They can't afford to give a foul away on a drive when you know you're beat. Obviously not when the man's shooting the ball, but they can do that and try to mess up the momentum with only a little over 48 seconds to go. We're in Murray, Kentucky for Southern Illinois and Murray State. Dave Weekly, Nate Ross. Inside of a minute to go in regulation. Racers with the ball, but they trail by two. Down the lane, Jennifer is fouled and will head to the line for two shots. Man, Pearson almost threw that one away. Jennifer came to the ball. Those cross-court passes are so dangerous against the Salukis. Now they're saying the man was not shooting the ball. Oh, that is no, a non-shooting foul, and Mick Cronin can't believe it. Foul on Tony Young. Well, that's the one they, they had one to give, and there it is. Now it's a 1-1. Now we'll see if he was shooting the ball. Well, he can't Ooh. shoot the ball when they strip it from you, but he was going in the act of shooting, I think. There it is. Well, nonetheless, the referees, you know, it's amazing. I've never seen a referee say, you know, Coach, you're right, I'm going to change the call. It just doesn't happen. But now it's bonus time both ways. Not double bonus, but bonus time. Murray State at home the last three seasons under Mick Cronin, 28 and 4. But now they are on the, the wrong end of the score, down by two points. 42 seconds left. Racers with the possession. Keith Jennifer pleading his case to the referees. Come on, man, I was going up for the shot, but he didn't get it that time. We'll see what happens now. Next foul would put the Racers in the bonus. Witherspoon shot blocked by Falker. Another huge rejection. Falker better keep his mouth shut. They can get it for taunting there. He went after him. You got to be quiet, son. It's a great play. Don't mess it up with a technical. Watch him go after this one. Witherspoon wide open. He fought. No way. It's the trap again. It'll be tough with the ball. Jennifer in traffic down the lane. That shot was blocked. Rebound Salukis. Young's got it off to Mullins. 
foul in the backcourt. Shot clock is off. 22 and a half seconds. How about that Saluki defense? Their help side is phenomenal. Center for thought he had an easy layup. He didn't. They slapped it back. And more importantly, rather than the other block by Falker, they kept it on the court. He thought he had it right there. Who blocks it? Falker. Who else? He's making a place. If he keeps it in play, gets it. And then they had to foul him. They're going to put the freshman on the line. How big has Randall Falker been defensively down the stretch? Mullins. Boy, he made that one look easy, and he's just a 56% free throw. Now, here's the big one. Remember I told you about practice, what they did at the end of practice? Coach Cronin said, we're three down with a couple seconds ago, and Redding made a three and got fouled. We'll see if deja vu all over again happens. Two-possession game. Rattled it in. Inside of 20 seconds. Or for three. In the zone. Won't go down. And the rebound goes out of bounds and belongs to the Salukis. Ooh, I thought they gave it to Murray State. You're right. And the jacket's off for Mick Cronin. Racers had a seven-point lead here in the second half. But Chris Lowry's Salukis have come storming back late. Got a foul instantly or get a steal. Oh, there it is. Got the steal, and Witherspoon could not control it. Great hustle by Witherspoon, almost with a phenomenal play. Either a five-second call, a steal, or an instant foul. You can't, with 11 seconds, you can't give up any time here. Well, Southern Illinois calls a timeout. Salukis have one left, and look at that record on the road the last three years. That's just being mentally, obviously, you've got to be a good basketball team, but that's being mentally tough, and they, 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 lay, their, they lay, lay their hat and their reputation on their defense. Tonight, they play great defense. Clock striking midnight in the east, and perhaps set to strike midnight for the racers of Murray State. This has been a terrific basketball game. Once again, in our reset, Murray State already in the double bonus. Just 11 seconds remain in regulation. It's a two possession game. So obviously, if you don't get the steal immediately, you have to foul. Oh, you can't let any time go off. You know, we talked about guys making plays in the last two and a half minutes. Randall Falker has been the man. Blocks a shot, gets a big time dunk to put his team up. Young will trigger. Got it to Shaw, and he is immediately found by Witherspoon. And what is it about the final two minutes of a game that makes the Saluki so tough? Yeah, it's the defense. Look at those numbers. It's the defense, and it's great mental discipline. Look at those steals. Six to one, 80 percent from the free throw line. It's contagious. Once you start to do it a little, you just believe you can do it every time, and they have. Last two minutes of the game, how about that field goal number? They're holding their opponents to four of 18 in the final two minutes of a game. Chris Lowry, his guys turn it up late. One more for Shaw. It's finishing the deal on defense. He's not over yet, though, Dave. It's about nine and a half, almost ten seconds. One of two. The lead is five. You need points here. It doesn't have to be a three. You just need points. Pearson. Jennifer, they're taking too much time. Got to get something to the rim. And a three-pointer goes for Holloway with 1.4 remaining. Yeah, you're right. They took a lot of time to get off. Quick foul or steal. Foul. Got a foul. And a foul by Holloway in the backcourt with 0.6 seconds remaining. Now, this drives you nuts to coach, but you know when I tell this kid? Miss it. Miss it. Yeah, that's exactly right. Because with 10, it's better make the first one, but miss the second one. Because, well, it gives us a three, but .6 is not enough time to do anything except a miracle. What a great game this has been. Mullins with the free throw. One more to come. I tell him to miss it because if a miracle happens, we play five more minutes. You can get a charge. All kinds of crazy things can happen. Just tell him to bang it off the rim. Murray State does not have a timeout. Rattles it in. Okay. And that's the game. 
A hotly contested game tonight here in Murray, Kentucky. Southern Illinois led by two at the break. They trailed by as many as seven in the second half, but Chris, Chris Lowry and the Salukis prevailed. 57-53. So for my partner, Nate Ross, this is Dave Weekly saying so long from the Regional Special Events Center. Southern Illinois defeats Murray State 57-53. This has been a presentation of ESPNU, the leader in collegiate sports television. We bid you good night from Murray, Kentucky.